Bien, mesdames et messieurs, bonjour. Je tenais avant tout à, à remercier le président Trump pour sa visite à Paris cet après-midi, ainsi que sa délégation. J'étais ravi de pouvoir accompagner le président Trump et aujourd'hui. Il Tomorrow. I think it is both a symbol and, an import, and very important that the President of the United States could be with us tomorrow on the occasion of our National Day and um, attend a military parade uh, which will, to which the American troops will take part. We will be um, also commemorating the 100th anniversary of the American troops joining World War One with the Allies and France. I think it is important because beyond um, daily news, we live in countries with, with roots which are deeper and go further and are beyond who we are. So the presence of President Trump was in my eyes not only natural, and I think it is also an excellent thing for the history of both our countries. Earlier today, we started by sharing part of our joint history at the Invalid Museum, the Army Museum. Then we had a working session, and I shall say that I'm extremely pleased about it. We have been able to talk about um, a number of topics of joint interest, and we underlined a number of shared convictions and, most importantly, a joint roadmap for, in order to work together in the coming month. We agreed to do our utmost to have um, uh, to implement a free and fair trade and in the field, and this is what the G20 in Hamburg also expressed in terms of sensitivity. We want want to work together in order to implement some efficient measures to tackle dumping anywhere it is taking place in all the fields by sharing the information that we have and making sure that both the European Union and the United States can take the necessary measures in order to protect within the context of free trade, but a fair free trade, that we can protect all of our sectors of activities where we are active. We then had a long discussion which enabled us to cover all of the topics um, of international policies and the challenges for the security, security challenges for people as well. When it comes to fighting terrorism, from day one, I can say that we've seen eye to eye and we are strongly determined to take any necessary measures in order to root out terrorism and to eradicate it no matter where, um, in particular their narrative. On the internet, we agreed to strengthen our action and our cooperation in um, fighting against the propaganda we want to get the, all the major operators to limit the propaganda and also tackle cyber criminality. These topics, I believe, are fundamental. And I do hope that we can strengthen the cooperation between both our countries. And it is a lot, with a lot of satisfaction that I heard um, from President Trump, the very same um, approach and all services will then therefore be working together in the coming weeks and months to have a solid um, action map for that. Regarding the situation in Iraq and in Syria, here again we agreed to continue to work together in particular in order to be able to launch together some diplomatic initiatives in order to, to put in place a road map uh, for uh, what will come after the war. We talked about our role, our post-conflict role, but initially we want to put in place a contact group in order to be more efficient, um, in order to be able to support what is being done by the, US, the United Nations, in order to support a political roadmap, in particular for Syria after the war. It is important to put in place some um, inclusive political solutions for that period of time. We know where destabilization comes from. Um, the roadmap will take care of that, we'll cover it, and we'll also ask our diplomats and our staff to work along those lines so that in the coming weeks some concrete initiatives can be taken. 
and uh, supported by P5. We also share the same um, intentions regarding Libya. And like I told President Trump, I very much want to take a number of diplomatic initiatives, strong ones, given the situation that we know and which requires more stability and better control over the region. But um, Libya or the Sahel, I think I can say that we um, have the same um, vision, a very coherent uh, understanding of the situation in the region and the same willingness to act very clearly against any form of terrorism and destabilization. Next, climate. Well, here we know um, what our disagreements are. We have um, expressed them on a number of occasions, but I think it is important that we can continue to talk about it. I very much respect the decision taken by President Trump. He will um, um, work upon um, implementing his campaign uh, promises, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, I remain uh, attached to the Paris Accord and um, will make sure that step by step we can uh, do everything which is in the Accord. Ladies and gentlemen, this is um, in uh, summary what we've been talking about. We will continue under a friendly, with a friendly tone. Um, um, and informal one this evening uh, regarding trade and security for both our countries, the fight against terrorism, um, stability in the near and Middle East, in Libya or in the Sahel. I can say that we have a, a shared determination. The United States is extremely involved in the Iraq war and uh, I would like to thank President Trump for everything that's been done um, by the American troops against this background, but I would like him to know that I am fully determined to act together with him in this respect, fully determined. I very much want both our countries in these matters to increase their cooperation in the coming month because the threat we are facing is a global one. The enemies, our enemies, are trying to destabilize us by any way. And I believe that this is very much at the heart of the historic alliance between our two countries and which fully justifies the presence of President Trump today and tomorrow in Paris. Thank you. Thank you, dear Donald. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, President Macron. And Melania and I are thrilled to join you and Mrs. Macron. This is a wonderful national celebration, and we look very much forward to it. Be spectacular. Tomorrow, Bastille Day. We're honored to be here in your beautiful country, and it certainly is a beautiful country, with its proud history and its magnificent people. And thank you for the tour of some of the most incredible buildings anywhere in the world. That was very, very, uh, a very beautiful thing to see. Thank you. When the French people rose up and stormed the Bastille, it changed the course of human history. Our two nations are forever joined together by the spirit of revolution and the fight for freedom. France is America's first and oldest ally. A lot of people don't know that. Ever since General Lafayette joined the American fight for independence, our fates and fortunes have been tied unequivocally together. It was. Uh, Long time ago, but we are together. And I think together, perhaps more so than ever. The relationship is very good. This visit also commemorates another milestone. One century ago, the United States entered World War I. And when the President called me, he had mentioned that fact a hundred years ago, and that was — I said, Mr. President, I will be there. That's a big important date, 100 years. We remember the tens of thousands of Americans who gave their lives in that valiant and very difficult struggle. We also pay tribute to the heroic deeds of the French troops whose courage at the Battle of Marne and countless other battles will never be forgotten by us. More than one million French soldiers laid down their lives in defense of liberty. Their sacrifice is an eternal tribute to France and to freedom. 
French and American patriots have fought together, bled together, and died together in the fight for our countries and our civilizations. Today, we face new threats from rogue regimes like North Korea, Iran, and Syria, and the governments that finance and support them. We also face grave threats from terrorist organizations that wage war on innocent lives. Tomorrow will mark one year since a joyous Bastille Day celebration in Nice turned into a massacre. We all remember that, how horrible that was. We mourn the 86 lives that were stolen, and we pray for their loved ones. We also renew our resolve to stand united against these enemies of humanity and to strip them of their territory, their funding, their networks, and ideological support. Today, President Macron and myself discussed how we can strengthen our vital security partnerships. We just had a meeting with our generals and our representatives, and it went very well. France has excellent counterterrorism capabilities. The French troops are serving bravely in places like Mali to defeat these forces of murder and destruction. The United States and our allies strengthen our commitments to defeat terrorism. We're also making tremendous progress. Earlier this week, with the strong support of the United States and the global coalition, Iraq forces liberated the city of Mosul from ISIS control. Now we must work with the government of Iraq and our partners and allies in the region to consolidate the gains and ensure that the victory stays a victory, unlike the last time. Last week, the G20 leaders also reaffirmed the right to sovereign nations to control their borders. We must be strong from within to defend ourselves from threats from the outside. The nations of the West also face domestic challenges of our own creation, including vast government bureaucracy that saps the strength from our economies and from our societies. For this reason, I applaud President Macron on his courageous call for that less bureaucracy. It's a good chant, less bureaucracy. We can use it, too. And a Europe that protects its citizens. We did not become great through regulation. And in the United States, Mr. President, we also have cut regulations at a level that we've never seen before. So we're very proud of that over the last six months. But by allowing our people to follow their dreams, that's what it's all about. To achieve these dreams, however, we must also confront unfair trade practices that hurt our workers and pursue trade deals that are reciprocal and fair. Both President Macron and I understand our responsibility to prioritize the interests of our countries and, at the same time, to be respectful of the world in which we live. We live in a very complex world. We have to respect it. The United States remains committed to being a leader in environmental protection while we advance energy security and economic growth. The friendship between our two nations and ourselves, I might add, is unbreakable. Our occasional disagreements are nothing compared to the immortal bonds of culture destiny and liberty that unite us, so strongly unite us also. As long as we have pride in who we are, where we've come from, how we got here, and what we've achieved as free and democratic nations, then there is nothing we cannot accomplish together. France helped us secure our independence. A lot of people forget. In the American Revolution, thousands of French soldiers fought alongside American troops so that, as Lafayette said, liberty would have a country. Ever since then, courageous heroes from both nations have fought for the same noble values and the same righteous cause. Tomorrow, the French tricolor will once again wave proudly alongside the American Stars and Stripes. Our brave soldiers 
will march side by side, and we will all be inspired to protect and cherish the birthright of freedom that our ancestors won for us with their sweat and with their blood. President Macron, thank you for inviting Melania and myself to this historic celebration. And to you and your spectacular country, may God bless France, and may God bless America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Très bien. Nous allons prendre, je crois, quatre questions. Well, I think we will be taking four questions. Mais ni le président Trump ni moi-même n'avons un micro. Neither President Trump nor myself have a microphone. <laughs> Alors. Uh, he, he's getting first question, President. Okay. Voilà. Allez-y. Messieurs les présidents, bonjour. Alison Tassin. A question from LCI, sir. The question, first of all, President Macron, regarding what you said on the occasion of the press conference together with Chancellor Merkel. Do you still hope that President Trump, or did you still hope that President Trump could change his mind regarding the Paris Accord? And now, President Trump, is it possible for you to come back to the Paris Accord and change your mind? Next, regarding your relation, how would you describe it today? What about the dinner tonight? Is it going to be a dinner between friends? Well, regarding climate, well, we have a number of disagreements which are in particular due to the commitments of the, uh, taken by President Trump vis-à-vis -vis his uh, um, uh, the, during the presidential campaign. So did I. I'm aware of how important that is, but we therefore talked about our disagreement. And we actually discussed the matter uh, even before President Trump reached a decision. Next, should that have an impact on the discussions we are having on all other topics? No, absolutely not. This is the reason why we share um, the same views and some uh, major common goals on many other topics or all other topics which we've been discussing today and we shall um, move forward together. Next, and well, of course, the, the President Trump will um, tell you about it, but he's made a number of commitments, and we're going to be working together. And my willingness is to continue to um, work with the, the United States and President Trump on this very major topic. I understand that it's important to save jobs. Um, that being said, we shall um, leave the United States of America uh, work on what is uh, its roadmap and continue to talk about it. So today, there's nothing new and unprecedented, otherwise we would have told you about it. But I believe there is a joint willingness to continue to talk about this and uh, try and find the best possible uh, agreement. As far as I'm concerned, I'm very much, I remain extremely attached to the framework of the Paris Accord, which has been a major international breakthrough. And it is um, within that framework that I'm uh, um, working on uh, our priorities, including for the European Union. Lastly, um, as you know, I never very much want to comment uh, who we are and uh, what we are doing personally. But I can tell you that uh, this evening uh, at the Eiffel Tower, it will be a dinner between friends because we are the representatives of two uh, countries which have been allies forever. And because we've been able to build a strong relation, which is dear to me because it matters a great deal for both our countries, it will therefore give me great pleasure to have dinner to, uh, together with you tonight. I think that I can reiterate we have a, um, a very good relationship, a good friendship, and we look forward to dinner tonight at the Eiffel Tower. It'll be something special. And um, yeah, I mean, something could happen with respect to the Paris Accord. We'll see what happens. But uh, we will talk about that over the coming period of time. And if it happens, that'll be wonderful. And if it doesn't, that'll be OK, too. But we'll see what happens. But we did discuss many things today, including the ceasefire in Syria. And we discussed uh, the Ukraine. We discussed a lot of different topics. Uh, we briefly hit on the Paris Accord. Uh, 
and we'll see what happens. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, Mr. President. Mr. President, your FBI nominee said if someone in a campaign got an email about Russia, like the one that your son Don Jr. received, that they should alert the FBI rather than accept that meeting. Is he wrong? Also, were you misled by your team in not knowing about this meeting? And Mr. President, thank you very much. You have heard President Trump say that it may have been Russia, it may have been others who interfered with the U.S. election. Is President Trump taking a hard enough line on Russia as you see it? Merci. Well, I'll start off by saying, first of all, uh, I believe that we will have a great FBI director. I think he's doing really well. And uh, we're very proud of that choice. I think I've done a great service to the country by choosing him. He, uh, he will make us all proud, and I think someday we'll see that, and hopefully someday soon. So we're very proud of him. Uh, as far as my son is concerned, my son is a wonderful young man. He took a meeting with a Russian lawyer, not a government lawyer, but a Russian lawyer. Uh, it was a short meeting. Uh, it was a meeting that um, went very, very quickly, very fast. Two other people in the room, they, I guess one of them left almost immediately, and the other one was uh, not really focused on the meeting. I do think this, I think from a practical standpoint, uh, most people would have taken that meeting. It's called opposition research or even research into your opponent. I've had many people, I have only been in politics for two years, but I've had many people call up, oh, gee, we have information on this factor or this person or, frankly, Hillary. Uh, that's very standard in politics. Politics is not the nicest business in the world, but it's very standard where they have information and you take the information. In the case of Don, uh, he listened. Uh, I guess they talked about, as I see it, they talked about adoption and some things. Uh, adoption wasn't even a part of the campaign. Uh, but. Nothing happened from the meeting. Zero happened from the meeting. And honestly, I think the press made a very big deal over something that really a lot of people would do. Now, the uh, lawyer that went to the meeting, I see that she was in the halls of Congress also. Uh, somebody said that her visa or her passport to come into the country was approved by Attorney General Lynch. Now, maybe that's wrong. I just heard that a little while ago. but. It's a little surprised to hear that. So she was here because of Lynch. Uh, so, again, I have a son who's a great young man. He's a fine person. He took a meeting with a lawyer from Russia. Uh, it lasted for a very short period, and nothing came of the meeting. And I think it's a meeting that most people in politics probably would have taken. Mr. President? Yes, to, to answer your question, I will not interfere. Et pour répondre à votre question, je ne vais pas me mêler à la politique interne des États-Unis. Je pense que c'est un bon principe que de ne pas interférer dans la vie nationale. And I do believe that both of us have direct relationship with Russia. President Trump had two hours, more than two hours meeting with President Putin during the past G20. The last G20 and myself, I had two very long meetings with uh, President Putin, the very first one in uh, Versailles and the second one during the G20, and this relationship is very important. We have a lot of disagreements. We have a lot of uh, discrepancies, obviously, with Russia. But in the current environment, especially in Middle East, it's a necessity to work together, to exchange information, to share disagreements, and to try to build solutions. So that's my relationship with Russia. And we don't have, obviously, the same relationship as the one with the, the U.S., but that's a long-standing relationship with Russia as well. And I think it's important that both of us have direct discussion and contact with President Putin. One of the great things that came out of that meeting, by the way, even though it's not part of the question, was the fact that we got a ceasefire that now has lasted for, I guess, Mr. President, almost five days. And while five days doesn't sound like a long period of time, in terms of a ceasefire in Syria, that's a very long period of time. And uh, that was a result of having communication with a country. So during that five-day five period, a lot of lives have been saved. A lot of people were not killed. No shots have been fired. 
in a very, very dangerous part of the world, and this is one of the most dangerous parts of Syria itself. So by having some communication and dialogue, we were able to have a ceasefire, and it's going to go on for a while. And frankly, we're working on a second ceasefire in a very uh, rough part of Syria. And if we get that and a few more, all of a sudden you're going to have no bullets being fired in Syria. And that would be a wonderful thing. Mr. President, you have a question? Troisième question. Oui, bonsoir, Monsieur le Président. Mathieu Koch, BFM TV. Third question. From BFM TV, a question to President Macron. Uh, you went to Lausanne in order to support Paris' uh, a bid for the Olympic Games, and on this occasion, you somehow criticized uh, President Trump's policy without naming him. You said that France made a very clear choice to leave his uh, its border open and not to build walls, walls to protect its people. <laughs> Do you condemn the Muslim ban and um, the building of a war between the United States and Mexico? Regarding Syria, as it was just mentioned by President Trump, is uh, France, uh, does France stand ready to talk um, um, directly with Bashar al-Assad in the negotiation that you mentioned? You've mentioned a friend, Jim. Uh, we told you that Paris is no longer Paris. Um, you were implying at the time that Paris was not safe anymore. You've also said that France and Germany are infected by terrorism and, quote, it's their fault because they let people enter the territory. Uh, those are very strong words. Uh, would you repeat them today? And do you still believe that France is not able to fight terrorism on its own territory? Thank you. You better let me answer that one first. That's a beauty. <laughs> He's the one that asked the question. That wasn't even one of my picks. Uh, you know what? It's going to be just fine because you have a great president. You have somebody that's going to run this country right. And I would be willing to bet, because I think this is one of the great cities, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And uh, you have a great leader now. You have a great president. You have a tough president. He's not going to be easy on people that are breaking the laws and people that show this tremendous violence. So I really have a feeling that uh, you're going to have a very, very peaceful and beautiful Paris. And I'm coming back. You better do a good job, please. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to make me look very bad. <laughs> And you're always welcome. Thank you. Sur la première question, j'ai répondu euh, à, la, à ce sujet. Regarding the first question, like I said, I believe that the discussions that we've had today is the proper answer to terrorism. And the right answer is strength and cooperation between our services. Sans merci, dans tous les théâtres d'opération où les terroristes um, s'organisent. Never-ending fight against terrorists, no matter where they are. This is what I was referring to. This is what we are working on actively together. So, in this respect, there is no difference and no gap between the French and the American positions. When um, I have something to say, I say it clearly, and I do say who I'm uh, aiming at. And when I Jeux politiques français, refer aussi, to those who have been um, my opponents in uh, the Donc, French political battle. I also mention the names. En la matière, so sur la lutte uh, le let us not mix up, up everything. And regarding the fight against terrorism, I think that the right approach is to have a strength and cooperation in the field of intelligence, is also to um, be working together on all the theaters of operation where we are. And I think that the decisions we which they will important. enable us to do more. Next, your question regarding Je Bashar al-Assad, which is an important one. Let me put it simply. Indeed, we've, um, we now have a new approach of Syria because we want some results and we want to be closely working together with our partners, including the United States of America. We have one main goal, which is to eradicate terrorism, no matter who they are. We want to build an inclusive and sustainable political solution. Against that background, I do not require Assad's departure. This is no longer a prerequisite for France to 
que nous avons fermé notre ambassade à Damas et que nous n'avons pas eu contact avec Bachar Al-Assad et que nous avons posé cette condition sans aucune efficacité. Troisième point, nous avons une ligne rouge commune que nous partageons avec le président Trump. Il est intervenu avant que je sois élu sur ce sujet. Je l'ai réaffirmé lorsque aucune utilisation d'armes chimiques. Toute utilisation d'armes chimiques fera l'objet de représailles immédiates sur les lieux d'utilisation ou de stockage. Quatrième réaction, an attack against a reaction uh, regarding the storage places and next we also want humanitarian corridors dans la durée la stabilité politique also we want to build a sustainable political stability for Syria this is our roadmap in order to stick to it we need a diplomatic initiative beyond our military actions this is what we've been agreed upon incluant Agreeing upon because we want to take an initiative with um, the members of the Security Council and a number of um, countries involved in the process. In of course, there will be representatives of Assad that will enable us to put in place the roadmap for after the war. But there will also be uh, representatives of the Syrian opposition and people with different backgrounds, and we will to all of them against that Dernière background. Question. One last question okay. for an American journalist. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you uh, Phoenix TV uh, of China. Uh, my question is uh, addressed to two presidents, uh, Mr. President Macron. Uh, you have had the first meeting for both presidents. Mr. Macron, you had your first meeting with the Chinese president during the G20 summit. What will France do? How will France cooperate with all of these areas with China? And what do you think, personally, of Mr. Xi Jinping? You have just met a Chinese president, a president uh, during the uh, G20 summit. And what, how do you want continue to work with China, and uh, what do you personally uh, think about Mr. Xi Jinping? Thank you very much. Well, he's a friend of mine. I have great respect for him. We've gotten to know each other very well. Uh, a great leader. He's a very talented man. I think he's a very good man. He loves China, I can tell you. He loves China. He wants to do what's right for China. We've asked him for some assistance with respect to North Korea. Uh, probably he could do a little bit more, but we'll find out. Uh, we're now working on some trade deals. Uh, he's been uh, very nice. Uh, he's let, as you know, beef go back in, uh, certain financing go back in, credit card financing, and various other things go back in at my request, which is a great thing for our farmers. So a lot of good things are happening, but we're going to be working on some very major trade components. But President Xi is a uh, terrific guy. I like being with him a lot. Uh, and he's a very special person. Okay, thank you. J'ai eu le premier entretien physique après une discussion téléphonique avec le président Xi. I first talked to President Xi over the telephone, then I got to meet him in the margin of the G20 summit in Hamburg. Earlier, early next year, I will be traveling to China. We have agreed to it. So I cannot say that he's a friend of mine or that I know him very well because I very much want to say things as they are. But we had some initial contacts which were extremely fruitful and positive. I have a lot of respect for President Xi, and I would like to say that over the past few months he did express his willingness to have a vision for multilateralism and wanted to commit himself on a number of topics. I think that many of us remember his words in Davos, and he there very strongly expressed his vision of the role of China. We have a number of joint commitments, including on climate. He's very committed to that, and he told me that he wanted to do more in the field, and I can only be happy about it. We, he wants some uh, strong cooperation. And like President Trump said, um, there are also the trade issues and regarding a number of um, activities. There are um, issues, there are differences, but a joint willingness to sort, out, sort them out. And as members of uh, permanent members of the Security Council, we want to work together on all of the topics we've been discussing today. And China, in this respect, is a key uh, partner in order to build peace all 
around the world. And now I share what President Trump just said, that China is to play a very specific role regarding the rising tension, um, the growing tension in, uh, with North Korea. And it, it's important that China can play full its role in the region. In summary, I think he's today one of the great leaders of our world, um, implementing a major and ambitious reform of China, society and the economy in China, and therefore my willingness in this respect as well is to have a strategic dialogue, the purpose of which is to continue to talk about the industry, um, uh, civil nuclear industry, economic matters, and talk about any difficulties we may have together. Very well. Allow me to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and once again thank President Trump for his visit, and I will be seeing him um, in a few moments in a friendly thank atmosphere. Thank you very much. Great honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.